Hey there, Pure Report listeners. Rob Ludeman here. I want to welcome you to another episode of the Pure Report podcast and preview what is going to be upcoming is our great co-host Sam Maricini live at a Flash Crew user group event where he was able to track down Simon Dodsley, one of our solution architects who looks after new stack technologies. And Sam and Simon talk about DevOps and cloud integration, APIs, and all the things that Pure is doing to play in this space. So stay tuned uh, to hear more from Sam and Simon. And uh, beyond that, if improving your use of data is your thing, you are going to want to join Pure at Pure Accelerate in Austin, Texas from September 16th through the 18th. Session catalog is live, so you can choose now for more than 130 sessions designed to help you get ahead of your competitors. And you can learn more at www.purestorage.com slash Accelerate. We hope to see you there. And now stay tuned for Sam and Simon from Flash Crew User Group in Pittsburgh. Hello and welcome back to the Pure Report podcast. I'm your co-host Sam Marasini. The Pure Report is where we take a closer look at pure storage products, technologies, and solutions I'm in my hometown, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, at the Pure Storage Flash Crew Users Group meeting, and I had to grab the keynote speaker, Simon Dodsley. Simon, how are you, sir? I am good. Thank you very much, Simon. Thanks for joining me. So you are director of new, tech, new stack technologies here at Pure Storage, which means you are OpenStack, containers, orchestration, automated tools, you name it, you're part of it. You're behind the white papers. You just present it to the crowd here. I don't even know where to start. So, so tell me a little bit about what it is that, that you're doing here. So basically, I just travel around and speak to customers and internal people about what we're doing in the new stack technology space. That's all the new generation IT that's coming along open source integration, containers, open stack, third party tool sets, all of that sort of stuff. So that's what I do. And I, I travel the globe and talk to people about this sort of stuff. At conferences and all those types of things. So thank you for coming yep. to Pittsburgh, PNC Park. Kind of cool, a little rainy, but we'll, we'll get through that, right? Oh, I can deal with it just about. Yeah, there you go. So when it comes to sort of new stack. I mean, this is a new way of developing applications. It's a new way that our customers are approaching IT, and it's really taking the value proposition that Pure Storage has and connecting it to that new way of development. Absolutely. The, the new world is um, DevOps driven. Everyone is now talking about this whole DevOps world, how you integrate technology into the cloud, the hybrid cloud, the private cloud, all of that sort of stuff and how what I'm trying to do is work out how we as Pure can integrate our amazing technology into that space. And it's sort of interesting because really the, I think the easiest example of this type of development is your phone and the apps that are running on your phone. And Absolutely. The fact that those are, you're constantly going to the app store, whatever it might be, and, and updating it. And it's the 12-factor the, uh, authentication apps. It's using all of these different microservices to do those kind of things. It's really cool. And I think when it started, it was a neat little toy. But as it's matured, you find out you really need persistent storage beneath all these apps to make them really work. So it's growing up a little bit. Absolutely. When, when the whole container world first started, it was inherently stateless. All the apps that were people were using were stateless. And now we're moving into this bigger world where it's moving from like a dev test environment into a more productionized environment. AI, all of that sort of stuff is becoming really cool and people want to use it in their production environments. But production applications inherently require stateful storage. And therefore, you've got to drag that state into the applications and in the, into the containers. And there's so many things that come up, right? It's stateful storage. It's disaster recovery. It's all those things, which when you pick up your phone and install the app, you don't necessarily think about it. But as an IT administrator who's building infrastructure to support this, you have to start to look at things like volume plugins and flex drivers. And tell me a little bit about the container itself and how all this stuff fits together. So, I mean, when an application developer 
writes his application or deploys his application into a containerized world, he uses um, a deployment file which is called a YAML file, and that would be you know, it'll have a lot of definitions in there, including what sort of storage he wants. Sure. Okay, now at the end of the day, that developer should neither know nor care about the underlying storage infrastructure. It should just work. So that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it seamless and simple. Again, it's the whole pure, pure simplicity thing. And we try and get that into the containers. So what we're doing is we're allowing pure service orchestrator, which is our our application PSO. PSO. This is our connector. This is our thing that we talk about that it ties into Kubernetes, into Docker, into any of these containerized platforms. And it allows us to intelligently provision storage, persistent storage to the application wherever it lives in your containerized cluster. Whether it's Docker, whether it's Kubernetes, it, it, it really doesn't matter. There are different ways to make this happen. Absolutely. I mean, Docker is uh, the, the old traditional way of doing it. There's the orchestration layers on top of Docker. So we're talking Docker Swarm, we're talking Kubernetes, Rancher, OpenShift, all of those sort of things. We tie into all of them. It's all the same. And they provide the storage, right? Without even talking about the value proposition that you get around the storage, because that doesn't matter. Because like you said, to a developer, it doesn't matter. Just make it there, make it available and make it easy. Absolutely. The, sto the, the developers shouldn't care. They just say, I want storage. I want storage that's like this. It needs to be file. It needs to be block. I need to have it in this data center. I need to have it close to my GPUs that I'm running my application on. Right, that's where all the performance is. So, so while you're presenting, I, I made a couple of notes while you're presenting there. Right? So, so you talked about running uh, pure service orchestrator on bare metal, on AWS, on Google Cloud, on Azure. Kind of cool, the flexibility there. Yeah, so some of those that you mentioned, when we can install PSO today, but we don't have that backing store for those environments. We do with AWS, with CloudBlock Store, obviously with anything that's on-premise, so on-premises is the correct pronunciation of sure, it. Sure, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, we have that with the Flash Array and the Flash Blade. So you are running, whether it be OpenShift or Upstream Kubernetes or Docker Swarm, that will absolutely all work with us today seamlessly, single integration point, all the same. So let's talk about that. Where do you get PSO? Right? Okay. How's that happen? And if I'm a developer, what do I do? So, I mean, the developers aren't, shouldn't really be dealing directly with PSO. This is going to be the cluster administrators who okay. are installing Fair it into enough. their Thank Kubernetes you. cluster. The, the developers are just going to request storage. It's just going to happen to come from PSO. So your cluster administrators will be installing it. They'll be grabbing it from um, our regular locations. Uh, Which is uh, purestorage.com slash containers so, or code.purestorage.com. Yeah, so those are the places you're going to find the documentation okay. about this sort of stuff. If you want to actually install it, you're going to go to our GitHub to download it, or sure. you're going to go to Docker Store to get those information, or Docker Hub to get that information, the pointers to how you actually simply install this. They're cool. So along those lines, as you're traveling, as you're presenting at things like the Pure Storage user group here, what, what types of questions do you get from customers? Who, who's doing this? Are they happy with it? What do you see out there? So we're getting a lot of interest from the actual infrastructure guys who are now learning that they have to enable this sort of storage to their developers. Developers and DevOps guys are really starting to get a lot of traction in describing what the infrastructure should be like. You know, they're becoming influencers in the game. Um, and so the, the infrastructure guys need to ensure that they're providing the correct storage to their developers in a really simple, seamless, fast fashion. And that's what Pure can do. Forget the value prop of Pure, which is great anyway, but the way we can seamlessly integrate this into a containerized environment, it just makes everything so easy. And, and, and I love that. And that's, you know, from a, an array perspective, I, if I talk about it, we're talking Flash Array and Flash Blade, both underneath PSO. Absolutely. So P what we try to do with PSO is we're making effectively like a, a federated storage pool. So your developers are just requesting storage from this pool and PSO is intelligent and works out based on the request of the storage that's required by the developer. 
it will go create that storage in a block device like a flash array or a file device like a flash blade. Which to me is different services, which is why you're pure service orchestrator and not a storage orchestrator. Right? Ex exactly. I, exactly. I love that connection. You see that? Um, uh, so are we talking about containers? Let's talk OpenStack, OpenShift for a second. And, and I know that you do a lot of work with Red Hat. In fact, you're just back from the, the Red Hat Summit that was in... It was in Boston. In Boston. Okay, you were at something else in London. I was getting confused. You're all no, I was in... Denver for open infrastructure, then Boston for Red Hat, and then Barcelona for Cubicon. Uh, so there you go. All right. Well, let's go back to, to Red Hat and talk about yes. that for a second, because I know that you have been hard at work. And by the way, I should mention, you're the guy behind the white papers that we have when it comes to this space. Uh, and, and we have a lot of podcasts to do where we talk about some of those specifics in the white papers and things you found and things that you found really interesting along those lines. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think for now, you've been hard at work with Red Hat. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of work with Red Hat. They're a very important partner for Pure. Um, and so we've been working for years. We've been working with Red Hat on our OpenStack solution or their OpenStack platform. And we've been integrating into that. And we're certified with those guys. Hold on, um, hold on. We're certified with absolutely, those guys? Absolutely. So when yeah. did that happen? So that's been over a couple of years. Each different version of Red okay. Hat OpenStack platform right. that comes out, we get certified with it. Um, from an open shift perspective, which is Red Hat's variant of Kubernetes, we have what is called um, their primed certification. We have a joint reference architecture with Red Hat for using FlashBlade and Flash Array in that open shift environment. Beautiful. So one of the things that I saw that you, you had been going through when you talked OpenStack, OpenShift, you were, were downloading some things. I saw the, the command line interfaces, uh, pure FA underscore facts, which uh, brings back. Tell me a little bit about that, the plays, the okay. playbooks, how all that stuff works. What, what, what is it you're talking so about? So this is something slightly different. This is um, an, an orchestration tool that Red Hat own. It's called Ansible. Okay. And um, we now also have um, a whole bunch of Ansible playbooks. Oh, well, actually, Ansible modules that are then called by playbooks okay. that allow you to do provisioning and infrastructure control across both Flash Array and Flash Blade. And actually, today is a really good day because today is the day we were officially told by Red Hat that we have achieved full certification level on those modules. Full certification level on those modules. That is beautiful, and it, 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 it's a great thing to be able to say we're fully certified. It Something is, yeah. I have to congratulate you on because you've been working at that behind the scenes. We're, I've been working on that for a while. The Ansible modules are a, a, a baby of mine, and I've been working on those for a, for a couple of years. And uh, I'm, I'm really pleased that Red Hat have uh, seen fit to accept Pure um, and the modules that we've written as fully certified uh, technology. Uh, that's great. So outside of somebody Googling Simon Dodsley, Pure Storage, where's the best place to find some of this stuff that you're talking about in your white papers? And where are you blogging these days? So I blog on uh, blog.purestorage.com. Uh, in fact, there's actually a recent blog out there about Ansible and the new modules we've got in the latest release 2.8 of Ansible. Oh, beautiful. Um, and also another good place to go look for this information is purestorage.com slash containers. A lot of good information in there. As simple as that, purestorage.com slash containers. And there are a lot of events happening. I know you just got back from some, but there's other going, others going on. In fact, if you do purestorage.com slash company slash events, you'll get a full list of all of the events happening. Things as small as something like this users group here in Pittsburgh or Cisco Live, which is happening in a few weeks in San Diego, uh, the AWS Summit in Washington, uh, lots of different events happening, flash crew events. Uh, it, it, it's exciting times, isn't it? It's exciting times. It's busy times. It's exhausting times, uh, but it keeps me busy, and that's what I love to do. Uh, I love talking to customers. Uh, that's good. So, what what's next, or what can you tell me about what white papers might be in the queue, or interesting things happening? So we've got a couple of things that are coming down the line. I don't want to talk too much uh, about I where, we're, yeah, where yeah. we're thinking, um, but I do have a couple of white papers and a couple of blogs in mind about where we're going to go with Open, OpenShift 4.x. 4.0 is the next big thing for OpenShift, so we're going to look at how we can do that. We're going to be having a CSI driver coming along, which is going to be incredibly important in the Kubernetes space. So we'll be looking at how we can integrate that, how we'll be writing white papers about that, and blogging about that as well. I love it. Not only are you blogging on the Pure Storage blog, but you're also blogging at the OpenShift.com blog. 
I think, yeah, so some of my blogs that I do on blog.purestorage.com also get mirrored onto That's the awesome. OpenShift blogs as well. I, and you got a GitHub repository as well. We have a GitHub repository. We're very, very we big. We do and you do. We, so I have a GitHub repository. Anyone who does open source technology does have that. But Pure <laughs> is very, very, very pro open source. And so we have our own GitHub repositories where we're very keen on customers contributing, people adding things. Um, and I would always suggest that people go to code.purestorage.com. That's a great place to go start and look for what we've done and what customers are contributing as well. That's awesome. Thank you for joining me on the Pure Report. Uh, and thank you guys for listening. Remember, you can get all the episodes at purestorage.com slash pure report uh, on Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, all those good places. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you next time. Thanks, Sam. Thank you so much.